right guys welcome back fresh snow out here today and unfortunately on that exact same grade where the tractor initially got stuck without those chains on them the ATV got stuck if we look down here that fresh snow is great and all but especially early in the season here when we get a bit of mild weather mixed in with a bit of cold weather we get a little bit of ice underneath the snow and if you can imagine those rubber tires on pure ice well we're not going too far you would have seen there the four-wheel drive or the all-wheel drive wasn't engaging that's true i gotta fix that if you would have seen my other videos you know that uh, but in the meantime i'm going to be using the atv for a variety of things in the winter and i'm not going too far without some traction and so that's what we're up to today we're adding traction to the atv not in the form of tire chains but in the form of tire screws or studs let's go on inside the shop All right, guys, well, the main reason I want to get some traction with this ATV for the winter is because I now have a use for it over the winter. And what that use is for is to pull this guy, which you just saw me come in with a minute ago. This is a new purchase for me. I picked this up on my local marketplace. This is a Hydroman Mini 60 tow behind drop spreader. I've been looking for one of these for a while and they don't come up used very often. You can go and buy them brand new and I I think this model where I'm from is about 1300 bucks Canadian so I picked this guy up used for a fraction of that uh, the person I bought it from they have moved from a very hilly driveway to a spot where there's uh, virtually no hill so they don't have a use for this I've got a lot of laneway I've got a lot of trails that um, you know I'm walking on or other people are walking on and you never know when it gets real icy whether you're gonna make it up or not so you got to get that salted or sanded and that's what this is for how this thing works is basically like this. You hook this to a machine like an ATV or you hook it to a, a lawn tractor. And then as you drive, these wheels spin and these wheels will connect to an agitator here as well as this drum. And if we pop up here just a little bit and you guys have a look down there, you can sort of see how it, how it works as I move. Oh, almost forgot. There is a feature on this right over here. And what this feature does is it allows you to disengage the actual uh, drum and the shaft or the agitator inside the drop spreader so that as you're driving to the location where you're going to put the material on the ground, you don't actually have it falling on the ground. Once you get there, you push this inwards. And then what that's going to do is that's going to engage the drum and the agitator shaft. And now I'm going in reverse, but you guys get the point here. You can see everything moving there and that'll allow the material to come out. Now, if we look on this side here, we also have uh, all these different notches here in this handle. That's what's gonna control the amount of material, whatever you put in there, that comes out the bottom. If we look here, I'm gonna move this, this uh, handle. As you move the handle, you guys can see it's gonna adjust the drop portion on the bottom of the drop spreader. So that's going to uh, play a real important role in how much material I drop and how much I keep in, the, uh, keep in the hopper to keep moving with. You'll notice it is a bit dirty. There is a bit of surface rust, but I looked it over. The gears look good. Bit of surface rust along the paint. But for the most part, this thing looks really well built. Hence why I picked it up. And if we look right here, you can get a better look here. This might be the only area that I want to fix up. This is a piece of rubber where my finger is. I think it's worn away and cracked over the years. So there's a bit of a gap there. I want that to sit down nice and tight, but uh, obviously it's not in every spot. So I might uh, have to deal with that a little bit. Maybe I can get a replacement piece. Maybe I can slide that rubber down just a little bit. If you guys have this and you know what, uh, what I need to do there in order to seal that up tight, you guys let me know in the comments. I'd appreciate it. But on the bottom here, the drum's got a bit of surface rust. We'll take a wire wheel, grind that up, give her a little shot of paint, and I think we'll be good to go. But that is for another day, doing all that work. As I said, today is traction day. I'm putting in those tire screws or tire studs into these guys back here. And these right here are not my first choice in tire. They came with the ATV when I bought it off a friend of mine. These are, couldn't even tell you, super... What does that say? Super grip, super light. I don't know what they are. They're 20, where's the size? What is that, where's the size? There we go. 
26 by 12 on a 12 rim. Look at the lug on that though. Tons of lug, right? They're not exactly the best thing going for getting traction on ice. Yeah, they're good in the mud, but definitely not for the conditions I need. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these guys in, and I just bought these recently. Never actually tried them. They're four millimeter by 12 millimeter long screws. They're purpose built for tires. They're very, very small. You guys see that right there? Very, very small. So the threaded part will go into the tire. The head will stick above the tire and that pin in the center, if you can see it there, that pin is actually supposed to be carbide. Whether it is or not is to be seen, but we're gonna put it into action and hopefully it works well. You get a hundred of these, it was about 20, I think it was 24.99 Canadian or 20.99 Canadian. I'm only gonna put it on the back two tires. As I said before, my four wheel drive or all wheel drive isn't working at this point. And so they're, uh, they're not too, too uh, important at this point. Some of you will say, well, you need it for steering. And yeah, I do, but I'm gonna be going about a mile an hour with that drop spreader, so I'm not too concerned. Two tires on the back, 50 and 50. I'm gonna count up the number of lugs here. And then I'm gonna divide by 50, and that'll tell me how many studs or screws I put on each lug. I'm only gonna put screws in the center lug here, maybe one just to the outside there. I'm gonna avoid going too far to the right. Just, uh, just want some traction in the middle. Anyways, getting my, getting my uh, impact driver ready. We're using this guy right here. It came with this. This is a four millimeter socket, as you can see. Notches right into my impact driver and it actually has a magnetic head on it. So it's gonna allow those to stick to it. Not using anything fancy, just my old impact driver. We'll see how we make out. Here we go. All right guys, 16 different lugs all the way around the tire. We got 50 studs, 50 into 16 or 16 into 15, 3.125. So I'm gonna put three studs per lug and then we'll be left with two left over. Inevitably, I'll probably strip one of these studs or screws and so I'm gonna keep two extra. Let's see how we make out. I'm just going to clear the snow away. I had a steel brush, so why not? All right, the other thing I'm trying to keep in mind here is the lug actually, in the center, it, it depresses a bit. It goes in a little bit, so I'm going to try to keep the screw on the highest part of the lug just so that I maximize the amount of the, of the uh, lug or screw that sticks up. I'm also going to make sure I don't put the screws in a perfect pattern, perfect alignment, because if one starts to slip, I don't want them all on, all, all on that uh, particular line to slip, so I'm gonna stagger them as best I can. I don't really have any particular ideas here. Okay, that's that. That went in pretty easy. You guys wanna see the first one? That's the first one I've ever put in. You guys see it down there? That went in real easy. So I figure I'll put one there and I'll put one up here and maybe one over there and then I'll rotate for the next one. Get on there. All right. Yeah, that's real easy. I think this will be good. They're so small and my hands are cold, they're hard to grab onto. Luckily the old stiletto there has a magnetic end on it. Okay.
Some of you guys are sitting there and you're probably saying, what's this guy doing? I'm actually going to put them in random places along the lug. The big thing for me is I don't want them to be in alignment. That way if I start losing traction, the thought is the next particular um, stud will catch. And so we'll put that one there. They go in real easy. Oh. Made a new bracket for my snow machine. I'll tell you guys about that in a little bit. Okay, where were we? Okay, well, there we go. That's three in that tire. And I gotta tell you, that took me about 10 minutes. So that was not hard at all. The uh, real story will be if it gives me traction and B, how long these last. I'm hoping these stay in here indefinitely. I have no reason to take them out. And if they last through the winter, I'll just leave them in right through the summer. On to the next tire. Let's have a real good look at these before we go any further. You can see here, I don't have any particular pattern. I just tried to make it so that they don't line up with each other as we go. That way, if I spin, as I said, it doesn't cut a groove where one goes in that same groove as the tire spins. All right, so just randomly, you can see they stick up just a little bit, you know, two millimeters maybe. They seem like they're in there firm. But, as I said, time will tell how well they stick in. I definitely was just going until the socket bottomed out. Once it bottomed out, it pretty much kicks off the, kicks off the socket anyways, once the screw bottoms out. Alright, so there's my pattern. Nothing in particular. I'm sure if you had a pattern, you'd spend more time doing this. But for me, you can see three there, three randomly here. I put four there. You know, just, just random. I put it on the highest part of the lug, not down in the groove. And so that's that. Anyways, that is what I'm going to do here today. I'm going to go out and give this a shot on the same section of trail. I am in two-wheel drive. I'm in low gear. I am just going slow because that's the speed I'll be going. 
towing that guy back there at the drop spreader. So let's go try her out. Well, as you can tell, that was not an overall success. I didn't make it up to the top of the hill without a bunch of momentum. Going at slow speed, I thought I was gonna get adequate traction and just sort of creep my way up there. That didn't happen. Let's go and have a look at what the track looks like. If you guys look down here, the studs were definitely digging into the ice. You guys see right here? See the studs are digging into the ice right here. They're just not grabbing, up, grabbing enough to propel me forward. Now I had to gun it at the end there in order to get up the hill, but uh, before I did that, you could see I was getting stuck right about here. Pure glare ice underneath. We did create a bit of a bit of a rut there from the from the screws or the studs digging in, but it just wasn't enough. You can see over here as well. So overall, I think my first impressions are I got to get that all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive fixed because that might have been just enough to help me get up the hill with just the studs or screws in the back tires. In a perfect world, I probably would have the all-wheel drive working and I'd also have screws or studs in the front tires. Then I'd have no issue here. Now, before we go, let's just go and look at what we're left with on the back tires just to make sure all the screws and studs held tight. And if we look here, what I'm noticing, you might not be able to notice, but it appears that they're all intact. That's the main thing. So I think everything's intact here. I definitely, uh, I don't see any obvious damage. And so I'd imagine they would hold steady. If I had more of them, it might be better. If I had all wheel drive, it might be better. If I had studs in both tires and all wheel drive, it'd be even better. I don't know what my next plan is at this point. I think first things first, I better fix that all wheel drive. Try it one more time and then go from there. But for now, these seem okay. But I'm not going to put my stamp of approval on it quite yet because I don't know if these are going to actually replace real studded chains like these guys back here on my tractor. Because I can tell you, two-wheel drive, one-wheel drive, any-wheel drive, when you've got tire chains like this, they go anywhere.
right guys, well, fast forward a day and it is a lot colder. It's probably a good 10 or 12 degrees Celsius colder. And it's uh, probably negative 16, negative 17 Celsius right now. I took a bit of a break after yesterday's sort of uh, defeat on this little grade and two wheel drive. And what I did was I went into the shop and I plugged away and I fixed the all wheel drive on the ATV. Now I'm gonna put out a video very soon with that repair. But with the all wheel drive just fixed, you would have seen me come up this grade and the machine didn't slip a bit. Then comes the question, well, did the all wheel drive take me up that grade or did the, uh, did the tire screws or tire studs take me up that grade? I'm sure it's a bit of a combination of both. It also includes a combination of the cold weather. Now that snow you would have seen me go through just yesterday in two wheel drive. It was very fresh, very fluffy. It hadn't quite adhered to the underlying ice. And so when that temperature is a little bit warmer, in my experience, it's a little more slippery. But when it gets colder, like today, the tires tend to grab a little bit better on the, uh, on the uh, snow and on the ice. And so I just made it up there, not only in all wheel drive, but at the very end there, I had it in two wheel drive and I didn't even slip or spin once. I guess uh, the moral of this story is, I don't really know if those screws are any better than not having them, but I can tell you uh, there's something. If it's uh, one of those placebo effects where I think it's gonna give me better traction, I guess at the very end, uh, that's $20 well spent. If it doesn't do anything, well, I'm just gonna pretend it did so I don't feel like I wasted 20 bucks. Anyways, guys, check out that, uh, that other video with that all wheel drive repair. I'm quite happy it's up and running now. Uh, it was a very easy fix. Probably should have uh, looked into it a while back. But anyways, you guys all take care out there. Stay warm, be well, and uh, make sure you subscribe. See you next time.